Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the CTV Sports Dish. Uh, we've made a few changes here and there. Clive Chaz is not in studio, but he'll be joining us uh, during the show to tell us a lot more about uh, a Ugandan team that is going to be hosting some of the other teams uh, in uh, one of the big championships that Uganda gets to host uh, this year. My name is Emanzi and I'm joined by Shaban Lubega in studio uh, to give you uh, what is happening in the world of sports, uh, both uh, local and internationally. Uh, Shaban, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Emanzi. Uh, yes, you talk about the change, but uh, it's business as usual. Mm. Uh, good afternoon, everyone watching us on CTV. Yeah, I, I don't know if Clive knows what happened, what happened to Obote when he left uh, in 1971. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully he does, and hopefully. And hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that will not be happening, and uh, we are going to talk a lot of sports uh, from uh, uh, the cricket cranes. We know what happened uh, when they went to Namibia and the performance they put in. Uh, we have uh, a lot of action uh, in netball because Uganda is hosting uh, a championship right here at a facility that is not familiar to many people, uh, somewhere in uh, the ghettos of Kamocha. Uh, if you've not been there, uh, there is another facility that Uganda mm. has been uh, able to add. There is uh, a lot of action still, the Uganda Cup. We had uh, games yesterday. We have uh, another one today. and. Uh, we also had uh, some games uh, in the NBA, uh, some teams uh, aging closer uh, to closing out uh, series and others are fighting for their lives. So there's a lot more uh, that uh, we are going to talk about. Liverpool are 11 points with Man City and uh, Man City still have uh, a game in hand, of course, and uh, they will have to play and make sure that uh, they win to uh, get closer to the title. I think uh, most of us have called it and think that Man City should go all the way and win it. But uh, we should be joined uh, by Clive uh, from uh, somewhere in Munyonyo uh, to tell us uh, what is happening uh, in uh, the world of cricket. Uh, Clive, if you can hear me, uh, what is happening in Munyonyo, uh, you can take it away. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Emanzi, Shaban, and everyone uh, watching CTV at the moment. Uh, I'm at the Speak Resort in Munyonyo, where the Uganda Cricket Association and the local organizing committee did uh, launch uh, the second leg of uh, the ICC World Cricket Challenge uh, League B that Uganda will be hosting here in Uganda. I'll be giving you those details later on on the show, but at the moment, I am joined by the guest of honor at the launch of this international event, and uh, that's uh, the State Minister for Sports, uh, Honorable Amson who will be giving us an insight, uh, especially how government is planning to make sure that uh, this tournament is a success. Uh, Honorable, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, of course, you've been uh, part of uh, the launch of the ICC World Cricket uh, Challenge League. Uh, the Uganda Cricket Association are doing whatever it takes uh, to host another international event here in Uganda, Chambogo and Ogogo. As country, probably the viewers would want assurance uh, do we have uh, what it takes uh, to pull this one off with the backing of government? Uh, first and foremost, we are all here to celebrate the achievements of uh, Uganda Cricket Association and the achievements of the country through the respective teams that in the recent past at very, very difficult times we are able to qualify for major cricket tournaments. We salute them, uh, especially our athletes. We are also here to inform the country that uh, Uganda, through Uganda Cricket Association, will in the month of June be hosting an international cricket tournament that will be attended to by a number of countries. We are here on behalf of government to commit that, first of all, we have cleared Uganda Cricket Association to host this international tournament, but also we have committed arising from the request that came from the leadership of Uganda Cricket Association on the venues and on security, to mention but a few, that we will do our part as government to ensure that their respective and individual requests are met. Yes, uh, Honorable, also in part of your submission, uh, you did reveal that uh, cricket as a sport uh, have been doing very well. And uh, because of that, uh, in the next financial year, uh, they have been considered uh, for probably more financial booster. What are some of these things that our government has been impressed about uh, the Uganda Cricket Association as we get into the next financial year? You are aware that in terms of performance, 
Uganda Cricket Association has done well through the respective teams. In terms of ranking, the ranking of Uganda through Uganda Cricket Association and the respective teams have improved. So our work has been made much more easier based on the performances of the respective sporting disciplines, but also acting on the guidance of His Excellency the President. Uganda should have what we call the niche sports, and cricket is one of the niche sports. So considerations are underway. I do not want to anticipate because the budgeting process is still ongoing. But as I stated, we have made a good case for sports in cabinet. We have made a good case for sports in parliament. And we are optimistic that um, the next financial year will be much more better than any other financial year in the history of sports. And cricket is part of that celebration to come in one or two months if our proposals are all absorbed and approved. Yes, of course, our Honourable Minister, recently uh, you were a part of the success of uh, the rugby cranes uh, when they lifted uh, the Sevens uh, Africa Cup. Uh, Uganda hosted that one, an event that was uh, a World Cup qualifier and a Commonwealth qualifier. Just a few weeks down the road, we have the Cricket Cranes of the Ghana Cricket Association hosting another international event. And uh, the biggest cry out there for sportsmen has been the issue of facilities. We have international bodies continuing to trust us to host uh, international events, but our facilities uh, continue not to be in the best state. And I'm sure this is something you've uh, hinted on time and, and again. Um, in the years to come, or even in the next uh, financial year, are these some of the things that are going to be addressed? On the issue of facilities, I want to recognize the fact that it is a big challenge in Uganda at the moment. But I also want to commit that um, we have equally made um, three cases on the side of the sports subsector. The question of funding, the question of facilities or infrastructure, and the issue of the law, which is now being handled by the Office of the Attorney General to merge the government uh, draft bill and that of the private member, such that we can repeal the 1964 uh, Act. I believe uh, progressively from one step to the other, the country do um, recognize the fact that we have a challenge of uh, sports infrastructure. You have heard from a number of uh, key stakeholders in government uh, now talking about investment in sports uh, sub, uh, sector through the infrastructure. I may not commit that tomorrow or tomorrow next, but the country is aware that the challenge do exist. I think the most important thing is to look for resources in order to ensure that we start the long journey of bettering the sports infrastructure of Uganda generally. Honorable Minister, lastly, before I let you go, know that every day we get a chance to interview you on live uh, television. When Team Uganda was preparing uh, for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, you had a cry towards the athletes uh, that they should try their level best uh, to make you a golden minister. And of course, uh, Joshua Cheptege and Perth Temtai had your cries and they did. We have the Commonwealth around uh, the corner and um, the biggest worry uh, for probably people who follow sport in the Uganda is that uh, the preparations, we've not heard much about it. And everyone believes if we are to replicate uh, the performance in Tokyo or even the performance four years ago in the Gold Coast, our government uh, needs uh, to probably come and show uh, total support. Uh, how has it uh, been so far in terms of preparations on the side of government for Uganda to have uh, a successful tour out there in Birmingham? We will soon brief the country on our preparations for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, uh, UK. But I would want to, just like uh, in the Olympics, when you look at the number of athletes who have qualified at the moment, again, Uganda will be able to present the highest number, uh, just like we did uh, in the Olympics, in the post-independence uh, history of Uganda. This will be the biggest contingent of athletes who have qualified for the Commonwealth Games. So qualification is still ongoing. We are expecting more uh, athletes to qualify in uh, the remaining 13 disciplines where Uganda are supposed to have teams qualify. But for now, we are meeting as the local organizing committee. I proceeded to this meeting, I was chairing a meeting of the local organizing committee of the Commonwealth Games. That demonstrates to you that um, covertly we are proceeding and we are about to come out overtly. So there are things we do covertly, then there are those who, who, that will come out overtly. So for now, 
we are still concentrating in the kitchen of the Commonwealth Games before we get out. For you to know who has qualified, which sporting disciplines are going, who has not yet qualified, and brief the country 360 degrees on our preparations for the Commonwealth Games. But for now, our preparations are still more of indoor to prepare the team, to assemble the team, to encourage the team to qualify more and more. But as of now, we have qualified athletes that are more than any qualification since 1962 for the Commonwealth Games. And we are still expecting more. So soon we will brief the country. Or the personal note, what would be your request this time around for Team Uganda going to Birmingham? As always, we have requested our athletes, one, to be God-fearing, to be disciplined, but more importantly, to give their country, to give themselves their personal best. Give yourself, give your family, give your country your personal best. Because these competitions can either make you or break you, even at individual level. So you must have the right state of mind, but our humble request is give the country your personal best. You would have not only given your country, you would have given yourself, you would have given uh, your family. So this is my humble appeal to them as we prepare. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Well, you heard it uh, from the State Minister for Sports, uh, Hamson Oboa, giving us an insight, especially what government plans are to do for the Uganda Cricket Association ahead of uh, that uh, international tournament that Uganda will be hosting uh, next month. But also the preparations for Team Uganda going into the Commonwealth Games that will be hosted uh, by in Birmingham, rather, the UK, that's uh, between July and August. Uh, I'll take you back to studio for a month and Shaban to ch have a chat. Uh, when I return, I'll be talking to the chairman of the local organizing committee for this uh, cricket at uh, international tournament that will be coming to Uganda next month. Thank you, Clive. Uh, I think you've uh, had uh, almost everything that uh, you wanted to get uh, from someone like uh, the State Minister uh, for Sports, that is uh, Dennis Samson Oboa. Uh, he has given a brief of uh, what to expect, uh, but uh, I think most of the answers if you're going to ask about uh, cricket, who we'll come from the local organizing committee and uh, Lawrence Matlani, the head coach, uh, and uh, maybe his captain, uh, Brian Masava, uh, in uh, regards to what this team can actually achieve uh, in uh, June. Uh, it's good that they've launched from Munyonyo. Uh, if uh, you know how the Rugby Sevens uh, Challenge was launched, it was also in Munyonyo, <laughs> and uh, the results were good. So maybe it is... Uh, the game changer for us. But uh, Shaban, uh, we're talking about uh, the cricket cranes and uh, maybe Clive will get us uh, the side of the story from uh, the guys. But what are your expectations when you look at this team and uh, what they were able to do in Namibia recently? It's not very often that Uganda wins uh, a 50 over game uh, against uh, Namibia and I think it was actually the first time uh, that uh, we managed to do that. What are your expectations when you see this team uh, because I don't want us to talk a lot of preparations because mm. uh, that, is, that might not be our part. But uh, when you look at the team, uh, the players that we have and the countries that are coming in, what are your expectations of this team? Yeah, uh, I think uh, we've had uh, decent preparations, although you said uh, we shouldn't be talking uh, too much about that. Mm. Uh, but uh, when you look at the challenge that we're supposed to be facing, uh, we're in uh, the Group B alongside uh, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Italy, Bermuda, mm. and uh, Jersey, mm. and uh, we had a decent outing in the first um, the first round of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the qualifiers mm. uh, that were in Oman, uh, where we managed to win all our five games. I expect that uh, we can come back in Kampala, uh, take care of business, probably win uh, the next five games, and move on to 20 points. Because at the moment we're on 10, seven ahead of uh, Hong Kong were in second. Mm. But clearly, I think we are the better side in there, and uh, going to Namibia and picking up a victory in that series. Is, uh, which we eventually lost to one that is um the 50 over series, uh, I think uh, it was good for us uh, gauging our, where we have reached uh, so far against a side like Namibia because we all know we have been uh, having issues with our batting lately but um, I think uh, there are visible improvements in there and uh, I'm optimistic that we are going to come back here in Kampala 
have a decent outing, probably win all our five games, and then wait for the third round of qualification. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not so sure if uh, from there we will be able to get the job done because it's a long process of qualification. We're supposed to, uh, to, to top that group because mm -hmm. there are two groups in that uh, challenge league, Group A and B. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll top Group B and then enter into another uh, qualification phase where we'll face sides mm -hmm. that um, the last four sides in uh, the World Cup, uh, uh, World Cup, um, uh, I think it's called the World Cup uh, Challenge League. Mm. The four sides that drop out there, uh, join us, uh, the leaders of Group A and B in the Challenge uh, League group, uh, groups, mm. and then after there, the top two are supposed to enter into another qualification phase. It's a long process, but uh, if we can get the job done here in Kampala and probably go to Jersey and get the job done there and then have a decent outing in the next qualification stage, mm. uh, for me, that will be a good job done by the cricket crane. Yeah, uh, well, it's a long process, but uh, we must start where we are now. And uh, for the players uh, out there, Brian Masaba, uh, all these, Dinesh Nakrani, Simon Sesazi. Mm. Uh, the most important thing is to win this because mm. it is on home soil and uh, then you can think about, you do not want mm. to be... And uh, Manzi, uh, you, you think of a fact that uh, probably if we win in Kampala, if we yeah. win all the five games in Kampala, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll be good to go. To yeah, and the, the first thing is for mm. us to win. Uh, win mm. the next game, uh, mm. win the tournament and uh, we see uh, where that takes us. But uh, uh, maybe if I could ask you about the players, because we had Juma Miyaji putting in a good performance mm. uh, in Namibia. And uh, you could have been impressed by one or two uh, of these uh, upcoming uh, players, uh, or even the seasoned campaigners that have been there. Because, uh, like you mentioned uh, in uh, your submission, mm. batting has been a big problem for Uganda. And uh, I recall vividly, I think a few years ago, when you lost to Kenya by one <laughs> run mm. uh, there at uh, the Lugogo Cricket uh, Oval. Uh, but it's a team that uh, you would not trust to go out and chase uh, 100 runs, mm. but they proved <laughs> that uh, maybe that uh, had improved uh, if you look at uh, the performance in Namibia. Who are some uh, of these young players that Uganda should be looking out for? Uh, sadly for us is that um, our best performances uh, literally came from uh, the 20 overs uh, uh, style of the, of the game. Mm. Uh, but uh, when you go back to that victory against um, against Namibia, I think it is good to see that um, some of the youngsters are, are coming up and uh, are stepping up big time. Uh, but um, uh, for me, my worry is that uh, when I look at um, when we performed well, it was uh, more about uh, the youngsters and not the seasoned performers like uh, Brian Masaba because they were arrested at some point. So it is a big worry for me that uh, I don't think these youngsters mm. have it in them uh, to soak up the pressure and put up a decent performance in games of this magnitude because mm. yes those were just uh, tri series mm. but these ones are literally world cup qualification games you would expect that it's the big boys or the season performers who are supposed to stand tall mm. uh, put up runs on the board and then uh, uh, and then uh, put up a decent performance when fielding mm. <laughs> although i'm not so sure but we are supposed to be worried after uh, what what the what the so-called uh, season performers did in namibia yeah but uh, i think when, and when you look at the countries that you you mentioned that mm. are coming uh, do you because if you're Uganda and you've just beaten Namibia to be mm. honest you should be confident uh, when you're <laughs> going to face some of these countries I don't know uh, uh, what uh, you feel about the opposition that is coming to Uganda mm. but uh, you would say Uganda if you cannot beat these teams uh, mm. then you have no business thinking about uh, the World Cup too. <laughs> Definitely, because yeah. um, uh, the table suggests at the moment that our biggest competition is uh, Hong Kong. Mm. And we all know uh, we're probably a few steps ahead of them when it comes to, uh, to, 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 to cricket. Mm. And uh, that you mentioned, the fact that uh, we beat up on Namibia, mm. there is no way we slip up against the likes of Italy, uh, Bermuda, Jersey, and then Hong Kong itself. Mm. So we have to go in there try to pick all five victories like mm. we did in Oman. We have a home advantage um, this time round, and I think we are going to do exactly that. But if you ask me who is our biggest competition, after watching Hong Kong in that uh, uh, first, uh, first round, I think Hong Kong will, will be the ones to pose um, uh, a, a slightly uh, tougher test for us. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if uh, Clive is ready to 
uh, give us more insights from Munyonyo because uh, there is definitely a lot more that we'll have uh, to hear from there. There is still uh, a lot, there is not actually much time when you mm. consider that uh, the tournament will be starting on uh, 14th of June mm. and uh, stretching. Uh, oh, there, you, there, is still, there is not much time and uh, I would want to hear from Clive about the preparations of the team uh, and how it is going, uh, maybe the coach and what he's doing and what he's trying to change, the adjustments that he would uh, want to make. Uh, if you look at what happened in Namibia, uh, any additions uh, to the team or any uh, changes, anyone that is dropping uh, out of that team. I think those are th uh, questions that uh, I would uh, expect Clive to put to some uh, of uh, the people that are at the launch. I believe the, some of the players and uh, the coach uh, should be in the building and uh, they will probably uh, tell us a lot more uh, from that. But uh, when Clive is ready, uh, I think he will join us uh, again and uh, be able to tell us a lot more about that. Uh, for now, Shaban, I think we can move uh, and uh, try to discuss what happened in the Uganda Cup. Uh, where yesterday we had a game and uh, you had Bull. Uh, well, uh, trying to I don't know if Clive is ready. He could uh, join us. I, I see him uh, standing with uh, Denny, Dennis Musali right there on uh, his left. And uh, he should be able to give us more insights on what's happening uh, in the world of cricket. Clive. Mm. But you didn't tell people that. Yes, sir. Uh, mm. Thank you very much, Mazi. I almost said good afternoon once again. I yet I'd already <laughs> said good afternoon. And that's a bad. I'm uh, enjoying the show, despite the fact not being in studio with you guys. And of course, like Mazi has just hinted, uh, I'm joined by two members of the local organizing committee for the ICC World Challenge League B uh, tournament, which is a pathway or a qualifying pathway uh, for the 2023 uh, World Cup. On my left uh, is uh, Denim Sari, the man who is in charge of media on the local organizing committee, but he's also a former member of the Cricket Cranes, uh, one of the few Ugandans who have had the privilege of playing at the World Cup. And uh, on my right uh, is uh, Paul Kaheru, who is the chairman of uh, the local organizing committee uh, for this um, uh, tournament. And of course, we shall be hearing from the two gentlemen, Paul, mostly about the organization, and Dennis here will be telling us uh, the chances of uh, Team Uganda. But um, Paul, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dennis. Good afternoon, Clive. Mm. Of course, uh, starting with Paul, uh, we just had the launch. Um, maybe if you could brief our viewers again, what was uh, launched today and uh, what is it exactly all about? Okay, um, <clears throat> good afternoon, viewers. Today we launched the, the tournament. It's called the ICC Cricket World Cup Challenge B. It's the second leg in a series of three. Um, we introduced the local organizing committee members, all were introduced to, to everyone. The dates, uh, as we were told earlier, from 14th of June all the way to the 28th of June. We'll have six countries participating. Um, there's Italy, Jersey, Hong Kong, uh, Bermuda, and, uh, Italy. and Uganda. Uganda is the, is the fifth one. And Kenya, those are the six ones. So it will happen in uh, Chambogo, and uh, Lugogo, and of course we would like to have everybody coming to, mm. to watch this. Yes, sir, before we hear from Dennis, of course, in one of your submissions, uh, you did have a request uh, towards the Honorable mm -hmm. Minister, uh, Amsel Obua, who was here in the purpose of uh, representing government. And one of your requests um, was uh, the fact that uh, the fields, uh, Chambogo, Lugogo, of course, you have been telling, uh, as uh, the other alternative venue, they need to be reserved uh, because yes. this is an international <coughs> event. At this point in time, what kind of states are those two grounds, uh, Chambogo and Lugogo? Because um, we are in May, but um, the tournament is just a few weeks away. Well, of, uh, with the recent activities that you know about on the grounds, uh, both Chambogo and uh, <coughs> Lugogo, there was quite a bit of uh, damage done to the grounds. However, we've done the assessment of the grounds and we've seen what needs to be done. It's just a few holes that need to be plugged here and there, <coughs> rolling of the, of the, of the ground, the, out, the, the outfield, and then there are few small patches where we'll have to replant grass, which is actually ongoing now. So within two to three weeks, those should all be rectified and we'll have proper grounds. 
Well, we shall come back to Paul here because uh, guess what? Uh, all the nations and officials who will be part of this tournament will be accommodated here at the Speak Resort here in Nyonyo. We want to know who will be paying the bills. Uh, but Dennis, um, Uganda, of course, are hosting this tournament, uh, the second leg. There's also a return leg in Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, the first leg, Uganda won all their five games. They actually top uh, their group, uh, just a Hong Kong behind them on three points. So first of all, how easy? or tough was it for Uganda in the first leg? How easy or tough will it be for Uganda in the second leg? Uh, thank you very much, Clive, and uh, good afternoon, viewers. I must say the first leg wasn't very easy, uh, but uh, we had made, uh, we had had an advantage of having played in Oman before, and I think that helped us a lot in terms of the team doing better, uh, because we saw players like uh, uh, Tinesh Nakrani and Ronaka stepping up, and, and Arnold Otwani and hoping the team do well there. So I think uh, Oman, the advantage that we had played there for quite some time. But now now that we are playing at home, we'll have uh, the 12th man behind us. Uh, the boys have been practicing uh, since Lawrence Mahalani took over that team in 2020. They played a lot of cricket at home, so they understand the conditions here. And uh, I'm hoping and I'm praying that uh, we can be able to pick up another five wins. If we pick up five wins from this tournament, that will comfortably put us at the top of the table, meaning by the time we go for the third round, which will be in Jersey from uh, July 28th to August 10th, we'll be needing uh, just about three wins for us to go through to the next round and, and win the whole uh, the Challenge League as, uh, as the winners for Group B. So I'm, I'm thinking that the boys will do well. They are well prepared. They've just come back from the trip in Namibia. Uh, Kaduna set will be coming in this weekend to test uh, those that have been on the fringes and are out of form to try and pick up some form. So the, the, the UC has done everything they can to make sure that the balls are well prepared. What was the X factor? I mean, five, winners, five wins out of five uh, for Uganda away from home. We wouldn't uh, tell the same kind of story five, six, seven years ago. What was the difference this time around? I think then it's a, the tournament, it's a 14 day tournament, there are only 8 match days and the teams have to play, each team has to play uh, 5 games. So they are going to play 5 games within 14 days. That means you need, a, a lot, you need the team to be very, very fit and I think that was the difference for us when we, were, when we were in Oman. Oman is a very hot country, so some of the teams after day 2 of acclimatization, the bodies were already weak and were challenged by, by the conditions. So, and that's what uh, Mahdan has also focused on. Because the team between, I mentioned that between uh, this tournament, they are going to be very busy up to until uh, August. So they focus a lot on strength and conditioning to make sure that uh, they don't pick up so many injuries. Because they have a lot of intense cricket, but uh, of even the resources, not like we have uh, 100 players to pick from. So the group is also small. So Lawrence has focused on making sure the balls are very fit. We don't pick up a lot of injuries. 50 over cricket is hectic on the body uh, and they are playing uh, five games in very short time. So the boys are working hard to make sure that uh, they can sustain that intensity from the first game when uh, on the 17th up to until when we are 26th June when we take on uh, Kenya. Well, I'll be coming back to studio. Let me make an indirect uh, request. Uh, if the producer allows, uh, these two gentlemen uh, will be back uh, when uh, Emaz and Shaban are linked back to us. Yeah, uh, I think we've had uh, it all. Not all. Uh, I believe there's still more that uh, they can tell us uh, because we've not uh, really gone deep into uh, how we relate the performance in Namibia to what uh, can happen in uh, June uh, later this year. But uh, that is uh, Clive uh, giving you the words of the head of media and publicity and uh, the chairman of the local organizing committee. Uh, when you talk about that game against Kenya, uh, I think that will be, of course it is one that everyone will be mm. looking at. And uh, when you mentioned the teams that we should be worried about, maybe mm. you didn't mention Kenya, <laughs> but it is uh, usually, mm. uh, it, it, does, it usually doesn't matter what is happening, but if it is Uganda against Kenya, mm. uh, it's usually uh, a good affair. So I don't know what your expectations are. For me, what is in my mind again, mm is that loss to Kenya uh, by one run at yeah. uh, the Lugogo Cricket Oval. Uh, yeah. And uh, you think that there will still be a challenge if you consider uh, the history of the two countries and uh, how they perform. The difference is never that big. 
Yeah, I think, uh, of course, the rivalry still exists. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, when you look at uh, the performance we put up against them uh, and the fact that uh, their performance in uh, Oman was so awful, <laughs> I don't expect them to put up a big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why I had um, uh, listed Hong Kong as our, our biggest competition. Mm -hmm. But of course, they will come here with vengeance on their mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they are neighbors, they want to get one over us. I just don't think they will this time around. Yeah, uh, we all hope they do not get one over us. We we hope uh, Uganda manages to win all the games, all the five mm. games that we have. But uh, Shaban, quickly mm. before we go into a, a, the break, uh, mm. there, is, uh, there was a Uganda Cup that was played yesterday. Uh, in uh, a few uh, seconds, if you could tell me about uh, Boma, and uh, I, I watched the interview of their coach and he was mm. saying they have goals in them and they are going to score goals, <laughs> so Bull should be ready uh, to counter that. And Bull responded by scoring five. Yeah, I think it was um, an easy game for Bull. Uh, they got off to a first start scoring inside five minutes. Uh, that is Simon Peter Okech. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we're all uh, waiting to see the sort of performance that uh, Boma would put out because uh, they've been uh, the story of uh, the Uganda Cup this season. Mm -hmm. Sadly, uh, they were walloped and uh, I think that uh, the tie is done and dusted. I don't see them going to, to Ginger and uh, scoring four goals uh, without Bull responding. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think this is as far as they go. They literally have no business in here, but uh, because they have been playing lower division teams, somehow mm. they have grinded their way into the semi-finals. Yes, I think this is as far as they go. Yeah, but uh, you've got to give them credit uh, reaching the semi-final because they are teams, top teams in this country that uh, <laughs> don't <laughs> make it there. So, mm. Boma, uh, you must be proud of uh, what you've done Definitely. so far. They are the story uh, of uh, the Uganda Cup. It's yeah, it is mm. not over until it is over. Uh, so you still have a chance. You still have uh, 90 minutes. Hopefully they turn up for the second leg. Because we all know so many teams in Uganda yeah, usually don't It would don't be very up. unfortunate if they didn't turn up. Uh, it mm. is football. It is sport. And uh, you've got to respect uh, the opponent. If they, if they can travel and mm. beat you from your home ground, what makes you think you cannot travel and uh, win away from home? So mm. uh, that is what happened uh, in uh, Boma. Yeah, uh, in Masindi, that is. Mm. Uh, most of these, these Boma grounds are all over the country. Uh, they will tell you of Boma in, uh, I think, Arua, in uh, Soroti, and uh, uh, now in Masindi. So uh, a, big, a big one for Bull and uh, a chance for them to uh, maybe correct the mistakes that they made uh, in that final last year. Uh, when they were demolished 8-1 uh, against uh, Vipers. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely if, uh, if they face Vipers in the final, it would be an all different affair. Because uh, mm -hmm. we remember when they were heading into that final, they had all issues uh, relating with players that they had released and could not use in, this, uh, uh, in uh, the final. And mm -hmm. then the players that they had signed but were ineligible to play. Mm -hmm. So I think they had a pool of uh, 13 players to choose from. Somehow they ejected uh, uh, Express FC in the semi-finals. I, I, even up to date, I don't know how they managed to do that. Mm -hmm. And then they lost 8-1 in the final. It is absurd, but uh, that is what happened. And uh, hopefully, if they reach there this time round, I trust that they will put up a decent performance. Decent performance, but on the other side, you have Vipers who are trying to uh, win a double. Uh, they've already secured the league title. And uh, what is next for them is to beat Mbarara City and go to the next one. But we'll discuss that after uh, the break and see if Mbarara City can be able to actually uh, upset Vipers. But uh, we'll take a break and when you come back, we'll talk about that and more. Uh, it is a sports dish and it's uh, a Manzi and Shaban for today. Clive is in the field. Uh, let's take a break. <laughs> 